Three months ago, I gave a few of my plants a chop on camera with you guys, and I had a few predictions as to what's going to happen and a few concerns. But talk is cheap, proof is in the pudding. So today we're going to look at the exact same plants to see whether my predictions came true, whether my concerns were valid and so on. Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys know I love growing large aeroids, but with large aeroids there comes the need to give them a chop every now and then. Now with every chop you do introduce a little bit of stress to the plant, so there are always things that could go wrong. And ultimately nature is unpredictable. But given I've been doing this for three years or so, I think by now I have a fairly decent understanding and can probably give a good guess as to what will happen with the plants. But as I said in the intro, I think proof is in the pudding and I always love to speak from experience and from results, not just from theory. So I thought it would be good to check in with these plants now and see what actually happened. You know these a householder series where people go and they like renovate somebody's place and they clean it all up and then they go back and visit like six months later to see whether the family was able to keep it up and or whether they fall back into old habits and so on so i was kind of inspired by that very classic like tv show like you know doing something and then following it up in a couple of months time to look whether it was all worth it or not right i want to start off with this apple premium panadum variegata over here Three months ago, I gave this a chop in a repot because this plant was actually suffering from really bad root rot and stem rot. Essentially, it had no root system left apart from whatever is inside the moss pile. So let's have a look at what happened three months ago. This plant is currently rotting. That stem over here doesn't even touch the pot. Actually, I noticed in June that um, the stem was rotting. Um, so... I've removed the rotten part of the stem, which means that this vine is actually currently just kind of hovering just on the pole. It's not actually potted up at all. And it's still giving me new leaves because I always thought about that in theory. I always thought, you know what, I probably wouldn't even notice if I have root rot because the plant is just going to survive purely based on the roots within the moss pole. And yeah, this is proving me right. I honestly... I don't even know what the situation is like in the pot. We're going to look at it together for sure. We're going to have a little look at how bad it is. Um, so first, I want to kind of take these roots and I kind of want to loosen them from the pole because I'd like to save as much of this root system as possible. I'm just going to cut the moss pole. Ideally, I would have probably made a cleaner cut through the actual stem with... A clean knife but um, yeah I didn't have that handy and I'm kind of trapped now can't let go of this plant otherwise it's gonna fall all right so here we go and look at all of these beautiful roots over here I mean that is just exciting so I need to somehow wrap them into the pot but I'll definitely can do that and I'm really curious to find out what's going on in here so we're gonna do that in a second as well <laughs> Alrighty, now what I'm trying to do is I'll take these roots and I kind of just twist them around in the pod. And any leaf that's now going to be covered by the potting medium, I also remove so that the stem doesn't rot inside. Okay. So I'm kind of happy with that. I can now top it up with aeroid mix. And I know that's going to be off camera, but honestly, it's just me putting aeroid mix in a pot. All right, so it's now in a 20 centimeter pot with aeroid mix. Um, yeah, and the pile is probably like one, like one, 140, 140 now. Um, so when I extend it next, it will go just above two meters. So. Alrighty, so let's have a look at this pot and what happened over here because I'm just curious to, curious to find out if the whole pot is rotted, if the whole thing is like rot, root rot. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah, I suppose that answers my question. So honestly, all of this, even the second stem was rotted down below over here. So this definitely had root rot. Um, so 100%, like this whole thing is just 
going to buy. I'm going to bin this. But yeah, look at these, look at these roots. That is 100% root rot. If it wasn't for the moss pole, that plant would have definitely died, right? So I love moss poles. Okay. Glad I finally got that sorted. It's been on my mind for three months, but I wanted to kind of give it a shot and see if it's coming back by itself without me doing anything. And it honestly did. So that's nice, but I'm glad I've got it sorted. And um, look, I'll definitely keep you up to date and see if uh, the root rot issue persists or what's going on. It technically shouldn't because I got rid of all the rot part, right? All of the rot was kind of from here downwards. So this new pole has a brand new start and uh, yeah, hopefully it's going to thrive again. Alrighty. And here we are today. I mean, the plant isn't looking its best. You can definitely tell that the plant has suffered from, well, first of all, having root rot, stem rot, and then being chopped as well. But given what this plant has gone through, specifically that it's gone through all of that during winter and spring as well, um, I'm very happy that this plant is still alive. I mean, you can definitely see a little bit of um, stress based on these tips over here. But I believe the last leaf that I had when I did the video was this one over here. Since then, it has given me one, two, three, four, five, and a sixth one is coming. And the second shoot is finally reshooting again as well, giving me also its first new leaf in what feels like forever. So quite clearly, this plant is happy now. It starts growing again. It definitely threw out a few random leaves, um, but I mean, the newest one is really, really nice and super decent in size and goes back to pretty much normal shape as well. Well, it was getting a little bit D-shaped in between, which is totally understandable. I mean, it had to focus most of its efforts into rebuilding a root system. At the same so um, I'm, not, I'm not surprised by that outcome. I also have a little bit of a gap. There's kind of like nothing really here. That's because there were a few empty nodes um, that didn't, so the plant was just climbing up the moss pole without actually giving me leaves. Oh, being extra cute down there, Brettles. I don't know if you're in frame, but if you are, you're being extra cute down there. Bam, bam, bam. The stem has also gotten much, much thicker. So it is definitely getting more mature. So that tells me that it is done establishing a root system and that it's happy to regrow now. So let's have a quick look at the root system and then I'll tell you what I've got planned for the future. This plant has rooted like crazy. So again, six, three months ago, this plant had no root system apart from the roots that were inside the moss pole. And those were really the roots that actually enabled it to survive overall. The entire pod, the bottom of the stem, all of it was rotten. So if it wasn't for the roots within the moss pole, this plant would have definitely died. So when I then cut it and pot it back up, I'm relying on those roots within the moss pole to re-extend and re-establish a proper root system to sustain, sustain that plant. As you can see, there's many, many aerial roots or yeah, there's many, many roots going from the moss pole straight into the pot. So, whoop, and then if we're looking at the pot and I'll put in some close-ups as well, the pot is that there's a lot of visible roots inside the pot. So I can confidently say that the roots have expanded from the moss pole back into the pot and re-established a proper root system. And of course, there's plenty of roots within the moss pole as well. I can see that every single node that has grown since then has also rooted into the moss pole in itself. So this plant now has a decent root system available, which definitely explains why it's starting to throw out some larger leaves again. I'm not super, super happy with the variegation. I'm not sure if that's just purely random or if the plant is throwing out greener leaves because the green leaves is what gives it energy or the green leaves can participate in photosynthesis, so it gives the plant a better chance of survival. Maybe there's a little bit more variegation coming back now that it's re-established, but I do believe it might just be purely random. So we'll see, time will tell. I actually have a smaller propagation of this plant uh, that hopefully has a little bit better variegation as well. But overall, I'm really happy with this. It's reaching the top of its moss pole soon, so then I'll re-extend it with another 90 centimeter moss pole. So now, now that I don't need to worry about its survival anymore, 
I'm going to start focusing on making it aesthetically pleasing again. I'm not necessarily liking the look of this right now. You can clearly tell that this part of the plant has grown at some stage and then this is like a, a new part of the plant and they're feeling, they're feeling a little bit disconnected. So that will eventually become obsolete once I give it a full chop and extend in maybe six months time or so. So but that I'm okay with. But what I do want to do right now is it hit, it was on this wall, like pretty much right behind me for, oh my God, a very long time now, probably six, seven, eight months. So obviously all of the leaves have slowly started tilting towards the right, so your left, where the window is. Now that I'm not worried about it going through any sort of shock anymore. I'm going to move it into onto the opposite side of the wall so that the window is now coming from its left so that all of the leaves can slowly correct themselves again and point more forward. So at least that should make it into a more aesthetically pleasing display. Plus with two growth points now constantly pushing out leaves, it should get really nice and lush and full really soon as well. So I'm really excited about this plant. I'm happy that it survived and Full credit to the moss pole. If it wasn't for the moss pole, this plant would definitely be dead. Sorry guys, I'm having a hard time between getting all of this in frame, but also not getting so distracted by everything else that's in frame. Unfortunately, I just have way too many plants. I don't have any empty walls that I could film in front of. Um, so, I mean, while it's nice for you guys to look at everything else, it's kind of a little bit distracting uh, from the star of the show, which is this Philodendron Atava Poensi. But that's as good as it gets. Um, moving on. I also gave this a chop in September. So let's have a look at what happened just three months ago. Another chop and extend today, and today's victim is Philodendron Atava Poensi. So it's just about to reach the top of its pole, so it's time to give it a chop and then re-extend it so it can continue climbing. Now, today I wanna to try something slightly new. Normally, I just take the top cutting, I pot it up and I re-extend that. But today, I actually wanna combine the top and the bottom cutting into one pot and then re-extend it. So, that I actually create a larger pot. Now, I haven't personally done this myself, but technically, the, the idea behind it should be the exact same as behind my normal chop and extend that I've done the tutorial on before. So yeah, I thought I'll take you along and we'll see how we go. Okay, so um, before we get started, actually there's one thing that I do wanna say, I have a little concern. So the Philodendron Atapapuensi is different to any of the other climbers that I've done a chop and extend for so far, as in the roots are kind of climbing up the moss pole. Normally the plant's throwing roots down the moss pole and into the pod. What that means is that some of these nodes down below have potentially rooted all the way into the moss pole and the roots are coming out the top of the moss pole. What that means is when I chop it and I pot the top back, top back up, there might be roots in that moss pole that I now had to cut. I can't, I can't free them all. Like, this has rooted like crazy. So I, I'm not even going to bother trying to free any of the roots. I'll definitely have to cut through them which means that there might be some roots left in that pod that aren't actually connected to any node, which means they will die and will rot, meaning that there might be some rot within my moss pole eventually. That's kind of what I'm worried about. I don't usually have the problem because if the roots go down and I just continue using the top part, then really that is a problem that the bottom part of the pole would have, but I usually take that apart anyway or just use it for uh, further propagation purposes. It's not really gonna last forever anyway. So anyway, I just wanted to be really open with you with, you know, the things that I, that, that potentially couldn't go according to plan. All plans are different. So suppose I'll find out, right? Uh, All right. So clearly these two are quite tightly connected. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just kind of sticking my finger in between the two poles and I can just tell there's so many roots going straight through the pole. Now it hurts me to have to just cut them, but honestly, uh, it's a mess in there and I, I will not really be able to save any of them. And let's just hope that the plant really doesn't mind either. Alrighty, so here we are with the two poles. Now, I haven't really thought this through yet, have I? 
Okay, let's start with this one first. What I want to do is I try and remove as much moss as I can from the bottom part because that's going to be filled up with uh, aeroid mix. And then I'm going to combine these two poles into one pot. I'm not actually going to take the poles itself apart. Way too much work. I'm just going to combine them next to each other and then I'm just going to extend one of them. So I've got a slightly larger pot today. Normally I use 25, uh, normally I use 20 centimeter pots. This one is 25 centimeters just because I now have two poles in there. Um, usually the 20 centimeter is, is plenty and I like the 20 centimeter because that's the largest size I can get in see-through pots and I love my see-through pots because I love spying on the roots. But given that these roots are growing upwards anyway, there is not too much to spy about. Now I pop these towards the back of the pot because I want all of the leaves to be on one side anyway. And now I obviously have to kind of rearrange these leaves a little bit. I might kind of just point them inwards a little bit. Let me see if something is being caught. Oh, I'm kind of jealous of you guys. You guys can actually see what it looks like from the front. I'm just doing all of this from the back, hoping it's going to look okay. I mean, it can't be too bad, right? Oh good, I'm happy with that as it is. Now I'm just going to top it up with some airroid mix. Oh, okay. That was the hardest part done for sure. Right, so I'll put a stake here. And what I actually want to do is, well, I have two plants in here or two poles in here, I'm only going to extend one of them. I'm only going to extend the one with the larger leaves on here. That other one is going to reshoot from the top and then that new shoot, I'm going to redirect towards the same moss pole so that ultimately both shoots will then grow up one moss pole. And once I reach the top of that moss pole, then I'll chop it and then I'm back to my normal, just one moss pole. But this time with two plants on it rather than just with one plant on it. So I thought that's a... Uh, good strategic decision, but proof's in the pudding. So I suppose I will let you know. So first things first, I don't think there was any need for me to worry about the roots. Um, I personally haven't noticed any issues. There might be some roots inside that pole that were growing up and then I chopped it and now they're kind of dead. It could be, I can't see them. And I haven't noticed any adverse reaction by my plant based on it. So if that's the case, it might be there, but don't fix what's not broken, right? So I don't think there was any need to worry about the root system at all. If anything, this plant has increased its root system like crazy. There are so many roots going all the way up into that extension already. There are roots sticking out the top of the extension. So this plant has taken really, really well to its new extension and created a huge root system. That bottom part that I kept in here also has many, many new roots pump, uh, popping out at the top over here. So quite clearly, this plant has rooted really well into its original pole and the new extension and has established a really nice large root system and didn't seem to be too faced by the chop at all. So that top cutting is just keeps growing. It gave me these leaves over here, this one and this one. So I don't really think there's any decrease in leaf size. There might not, not be an increase. Maybe this one is actually slightly larger, but definitely it didn't decrease despite the fact that I gave it a decent chop. This is the newest leaf. It just unfurled. So it still has a little bit of growing up to do, but just given the size of the lobes, I reckon this is going to be a beautiful large leaf as well and that main cutting that just keeps growing up the pole happy as ever that bottom part of the pole that I kind of you know normally I don't keep that bottom part because I don't have enough room so normally I give that away and that bottom part did reshoot in two spots exactly as predicted so the top two nodes both gave me a new shoot or that top node gave me the primary shoot. It's quite large. It's already gotten a decent sized stem, quite thick, and it grew quite quickly. So I was able to slowly start manipulating it to start growing on that extension. So on that extension, I now have two plants growing on it. The third growth point, and don't worry, I'll try and put in some close-ups of everything that I try to explain. The, the third growth point, is there but it's very slow it's almost like it's 
stopped doing anything at all. So I don't know if that's the plan, just putting all of its energy into that first growth point or if that was just coincident. I don't, I don't honestly know. As I said, not plants aren't always predictable, but technically there is a third growth point and if it eventually kicks off, I'm also going to try and maneuver that third growth point onto that main pole that I've expend, uh, extended. So again, the whole idea was that if all three growth points are eventually on that same pole, that extension up at the top over here, when I then chop it and I pot it back up and re-extend it, I have three shoots on one pole rather than just always having one shoot on one pole and keep chopping and extending. So that was the whole point in me keeping the bottom part. I'm basically just keeping the bottom part right next to it so that I can take advantage of the new growth, but I want to maneuver the new growth onto that existing pole. So um, I don't always need to have two right next to each other just to save space. But yeah, this has turned out a great success. And in addition to that, because I put both poles next to each other, it just makes a really nice lush look and it gives me a nice mix between these large leaves from the top section, but also some smaller leaves from the bottom section. So I think it's a great combination. It is definitely, you know, it's definitely a statement piece and these leaves are looking super, super beautiful. Very happy with how this all turned out. Okay, and lastly, this one, it didn't actually happen three months ago. It happened just two months ago, I believe. It was just in October. So close enough to three months. Um, this is my, I think it's a Cebu Blue. I bought it as a Cebu Blue. It looked like a Cebu Blue for the longest time, but slowly but surely, it just became very green. And I don't know if that might be light exposure, if that might just be maturity. I don't know. So let's just call it Epipremnum Panatum. So I gave this Epipremnum Panatum a very classic chop and extend two to three months ago. So let's have a look at what happened back in October. Growing plants indoors to maturity can be quite challenging. And the main challenge I'm facing is the ceiling. The ceiling really limits the height of a moss pole I can give one of my plants. And also once the plant reaches the top of the moss pole, the ceiling really limits the light that is available up there. So if I want to see my plants continuing to mature while keeping the plant at a manageable height that works with the ceiling, then I have no other option but to cut it. At this stage, the plant and the moss pole, I don't really differentiate between them. They're like a union to me. So when I chop the plant, I'm also referring to chopping the actual moss pole. And the beauty about the moss pole is that it contains a lot of roots. Every single node of this plant has rooted into the moss pole. So there's quite a large root system available within the moss pole in itself. So when I now chop it, I don't need to worry about the top cutting because that top cutting has plenty of roots. The roots are just in the pole. And when I then pot it up and we extend it, the, the roots from the pole will actually expand into the pot and re-establish uh, like a normal root system again. So over here, you can really see that the plant has rooted into the moss pole. Sometimes the roots kind of come out the back of the moss pole again. That is still totally fine. They're still part of the root system. So really, these are the roots that I'm relying on so that when I do the chop and extend, that that top half isn't suffering too much. It's going to rely on these roots over here. Now, sometimes there might be roots that come from a node at the top of the moss pole, but it kind of trails all the way down the side of the moss pole. Whoop, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. And eventually it might actually go all the way into the pot. Now, when I do the chop and extend, I'm trying to save as many of these roots as possible and make sure that they become part of the root system of that top cutting. It's not possible to save all of the roots, but I'm trying my best to save as many roots as possible so that that top cutting can have as many roots or as big of a root system as possible to further eliminate any shock. Now, the first thing I do is I currently have this extension connected via this garden stake and I just cable tied all of this together. So first of all, I'm just going to remove the garden stake from the back. Now what I have also done is I have actually cable tied the two poles together. So I'm going to cut all of these cable ties as well. 
So I chopped the stem in itself a couple of hours ago already, just so the cut can dry out and colors over a little bit to prevent any rot, because that part is going to be potted up into aeroid mix in a second. So I cut the plant already. I usually cut it like the night before and let it dry out for about 12-ish hours. It doesn't really matter how long you let it dry out for. You can let it dry out for weeks. The plant at the top is fine. It already has roots, right? So uh, sometimes I even cut it and I, do I don't even repot it for weeks. That's totally fine. But I give it usually at least three or four hours just to dry over. All right, so see there's small roots over here. I'm just kind of pulling them out. Ooh, there you go. It's a good root to save. Um, got a big root over here. There you go. Oh, I took that apart and we can have a look at this a little bit closer. So you can see there's plenty of roots over here, but I also try and save as many roots as possible that have grown into the bottom part of the pole or along the bottom part of the pole. So these are just additional roots that I'm going to put into the pot when I pot this up. All right, so the goal is to pot this into a 20 centimeter pot and look at this root. It's so keen to get close to that pot already. I'll try and get as much moss out as I can, and I'm just using a little chopstick to loosen it up a little bit. But if I can't get much moss out of here, I'm also not worried. I have had poles where I just completely couldn't take any moss out. I potted it up and nothing bad has happened to them ever. So I suppose it's more a prevention thing. Nothing has gone wrong yet. But if we can eliminate any further risks, then we're just creating a much safer approach, right? Now that I freed up a little bit of space at the bottom of the pole, I'm going to fill this with aeroid mix. And I'm also going to spill a lot. Like that is definitely part of the process. If you don't spill half your aeroid mix while potting something up, are you even doing it right? I'm going to use a 20 centimeter pot. I know that is pretty small, but at this stage, the plant doesn't have that many roots yet. I'll reassess in a couple of months time if I potentially need to give the plant a larger pot, uh, depending on how well these roots have expanded. But for now, there should be plenty. This one is definitely rooted a lot. I don't normally get that many roots in here. Uh, so this is weird. Maybe I should have already gone into a larger pot, but um, honestly, I don't mind repotting it in a couple of months time if that's what it takes. All right, now I'll just top it up with more aeroid mix. All right, so that is that bit. Well, that's the chop bit. Now we need to move on to the extent bit. And I'm going to just reuse that garden stake that I had on my original plant. So let me just quickly free that up. All right, so I've got the garden stake. I will just pop that in here. To secure the garden stake to the moss pole, I just really use cable ties. Now we're going on to the extension part. So I'm just going to have a new 90 centimeter moss pole. And all I got to do is I really just cable tie that to the garden stake as well. Or to just one at the bottom, one at the top. It doesn't need that many. As a last step, I really want to secure these moss poles together. So I also take cable ties and I just connect the two poles together and I just use the little chopstick to help me guide the cable ties through the mesh. So I've done the extension. So that's really it. So this is my new mother plant, the one that I'm going to keep. I'm hoping that this plant is just going to continue to mature. Technically, it should because it has plenty of roots and also the one thing that it now gains, it's better access to light. When it was all the way up the ceiling before, this was hardly getting any light, but now it's really in the prime spot. I've done this chop and extend with so many plants over the last two years and I have had nothing but success. So I'm not surprised at all that this turned out to be a success. I just wanted to show you because proof is in the pudding. So I believe this might have been the last leaf when I gave it a chop. And since then, it has given me this leaf, this leaf over here, and then the newest leaf literally just unfurled the day before yesterday. So this is still super soft and it's going to increase in size a lot. Now, looking at it from your point of view, you can probably see that there is just basically no decrease in leaf size whatsoever, despite the fact that I gave this a decent chop. I right? basically chopped it in half. It's 
missing the entire bottom part of its power plus all of the root system within the pot and yet it still has sufficient energy to keep pumping out these large leaves. Of course we are going through spring and summer prime growing season at the moment so surely that has something to do with it as well and I probably would have seen a larger decrease in leaf size if I would have gone through the same during winter. I probably would have seen a decrease in leaf size just during winter full stop even if I don't chop it. So of course the growing season, the light exposure, the daylight hours, you, the, the sunlight hours, the temperatures and so on. Of course, the growing conditions are the main, the main ingredient that makes you grow large leaves. But regardless, if you give a plant a massive chop like I did two, three months ago, normally your plant would always go through a little bit of shock and put focus into re-establishing the root system first before it can grow larger leaves again. But because this plant had such a decent root system within the moss pole already, it basically didn't need to spend that much energy into re-establishing a root system. So it was able to just continuously grow. If we're looking at the pot, you can definitely see that there are some roots that came from the moss pole that have grown towards the edge of the pot. Not heaps, like not that many, but keep in mind it has only been, sorry Brad, keep in mind it only has been two three months right and so um definitely a good start and i'm expecting there to be more and more roots growing um into the pot over time i mean it's only really got maybe it's only really grown 10 centimeters or so on its moss pole in, on its extension uh anyway so there's still plenty of time for this one to grow it probably won't need another extension for hopefully another year also, that comes to show, like, this pot, that 20 centimeter pot is plenty, right? Like, it doesn't, it hasn't even filled out this, this pot with roots yet. So, while the pot might look really small on first glance compared to the pole in itself, this is, I would have probably gotten away with a 14 centimeter pot for the first few weeks or months, right? Um, but I mean, then I would just have to repot it. So, I might as well just give it a 20 centimeter pot, but in my opinion, Specifically because I'm only growing one plant on this pole, absolutely no point in giving it a pot larger than that 20 centimeter pot. If there was two or three in it, then I would have probably gone um, with a 25 centimeter pot. Anyway, I'll end it over here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below if you did and let me know if you want me to make this into a regular thing. Checking back in on the plants that I chopped a while ago just to see whether it was a success to give you some lesson learned and to just really show you that, well, to show you the evidence, to show you the proof, uh, rather than just me talking about it. If you do want that to happen, what should we call that segment? I'm, I don't know, I haven't really made up my mind. Probably by now you know what I called that segment because I posted it, but I'm more than happy for other suggestions on what we should call that. Maybe like a before and after is probably a bit too basic maybe like where are they now how are they now i don't know let me know get creative and let me know in the comment section below what that segment should be called anyway i'll wrap it up now i hope i was able to encourage you to maybe chop up your plants as well because quite clearly good things come from chopping up your plants if you do, I highly recommend you look at this video over here. It's a full video where I just talk about all of my top tips in relation to propagation. Thank you so much for watching again. Like, subscribe and take care. Bye.